Think about where we were this time one year ago. What we thought we knew. What we never could have expected. I think that we are going to have more people hurting this year than uh, than ever. And now as coronavirus cases hit record highs, we enter a season where temperatures are dropping and there are new questions about what could lie ahead. Yes, I do. This week we talk about what this winter could look like. It's so hard and so frustrating that I just want to just break down and cry, you know. And the people yes, that could help us get through it. Yes, this is The Race. Welcome to The Race, I'm Chris Stewart. Winter in many parts of the country is difficult every year. But this year, when you think of the pandemic, businesses struggling to stay open in the added stress, it could feel different and even more difficult. But here in Washington State, a man and his family is cutting through those challenges one chop at a time. Shane, I'm a Marine Corps veteran and my wife is disabled. I worry about my father, who has been battling stage four cancer. They are hopes. I'm struggling to pay my bills and have shut my furnace off. And prayers. That Shane McDaniel and his family try to answer with each piece of wood tossed into this pile. get my eight kids together and we split as much wood as we can and we just keep mewling and piling it up. They chop, split, and cut throughout the year, but it's when the temperature drops, this father of eight receives countless messages on Facebook from people struggling, looking for a way to stay warm. It's a lot of messages from people that are just in despair. His drive to donate started three years ago when he says during a scuba diving lesson, he nearly drowned. Drowning changes your perspective on what you even own, what you spend your time doing. And I just wanted to make a, a, a positive impact. Each winter since, he's given firewood to those facing challenges. What are you working on now? People like Sarah DeRemer. Our propane bill was like $700 a month. Shane brought her firewood last year. She's a single mom working multiple jobs, something heating bills don't understand. I don't get handouts. I've done everything on my own for me and my kids. And so it's just like, it was hard for me to accept someone being nice to me. This wood goes to people fighting many kinds of battles, including one Shane knows all too well. Yep. Yeah, I lost my dad and my brother. And my sister's got cancer. Yeah. And then there are those fighting battles many of us will never understand. I said I'm a six-year-old woman who was just diagnosed with ALS. And um, this might be my last winter. Cindy Zink doesn't know how much time she has left. That's what God has for me, so I'm gonna wake up every day and live that day that he gave me. But for however long she will be here, she'll be warmed by the wood in her fireplace. It's a beautiful thing because when people come over, it just draws them right into the home. Because warm. All right, Jack, take that. Especially in the most trying of times, <laughs> carries a meaning beyond just temperature and flame. Those are the ones that make you say, you know what, we're gonna keep doing this. 
Experts worried months ago that COVID cases and deaths could substantially rise over the winter. We asked experts why that's the case and what people can do to avoid a spike. It happens every year around this time. The weather gets colder and cold and flu viruses start making the rounds. But this year, there's a third illness expected to enter the mix, COVID-19. New cases are coming in at record pace. Hospitalizations and deaths are rising too. Now, public health experts say the pandemic is in a critical phase, warning winter could be the worst season yet for COVID. Cold weather itself is one of the main reasons doctors expect cases to rise sharply over the next couple months. Researchers say the virus survives best in cold, dry conditions without direct sunlight, the same conditions that fuel cold and flu seasons. The cold weather also pushes more people to spend time indoors, where the virus can spread more easily, especially if air ventilation is poor. Pandemic fatigue is another reason COVID cases could surge this winter. The surge in general says people aren't taking precautions as seriously as they were before, and that it's already causing an increase. That fatigue is expected to get worse this holiday season. Many people got together for Thanksgiving. Hanukkah, Christmas, and Kwanzaa are right around the corner. Experts say while some people are simply tired of social distancing and being isolated, others plan to make an exception for just one day with family. Aside from warm weather, experts think this spring will bring a brighter outlook for ending the pandemic, with new therapeutics and vaccines to help bring cases under control. Hospitals are expecting a busy winter with COVID cases rising and as we enter peak flu season. Dan Grossman found how healthcare professionals are preparing. Like even the most knowledgeable of researchers. We're anxiously awaiting to see what happens as this continues to unfold. Dr. Michelle Barron doesn't have every answer as we enter our worst stretch of this pandemic. How much is this going to play into things and is it just going to make everything worse? Will it commingle with COVID and actually make people double sick or doubly ill? COVID-19 is coinciding with flu season. A potentially dangerous scenario Dr. Barron has given much thought to as the Senior Medical Director of Infection Prevention and Control at one of Colorado's largest hospitals. We've also been really encouraging patients to get their flu shots and make sure that they have that on their list. And we tell them we understand there's some years that you're sort of debating whether or not it's worth it. And we're like, this is the year you need to get it. Flu shot immunizations are up 41%. So I think that messaging has been definitely taken hold. It's an important number, as last year 400,000 people were hospitalized for the flu, a potential burden hospitals have prepared for as bed space is now at a premium. We've already surpassed the numbers from the first surge, so we're kind of like, okay, what's next? Maddie Smith works in this COVID ICU in the University of Colorado's hospital. They shot this video for us and say while they haven't reached a tipping point, they are expecting more flu patients to come in as the winter months arrive. To manage, they've made plans to allocate more bed space to the seriously ill, regardless of cause, and treat them with whatever drugs are necessary. The good news, the flu has been treated for years, so doctors have a good plan of attack. And the measures we've taken to reduce the spread of COVID are having a positive effect on the spread of the flu. We usually are able to use the Southern Hemisphere as a good way to figure out how our flu season is going to look like. They actually had a pretty mild flu season, but COVID hit at the exact same time. Dr. Barron says three to five percent of COVID patients have had co-infection with another virus, showing complications are possible as flu season hits its stride, but not guaranteed. I don't think it's anything that we can't manage that we haven't already thought about. For The Race, I'm Dan Grossman. Many schools are switching to remote learning as COVID cases rise across the country. <laughs> One family is getting ready for a winter together at home, next on The Race.